first time I'm trying to put together a, a tutorial um, with a keynote presentation. The thing is, uh, you're going to use uh, Scala as a language and we're going to use the Spark libraries to convert a CSV file into JSON. So that's not all about it. So uh, steps to make any format to any format file using Spark. So on this thing, I'm going to cover how to install SPD plugin in your IntelliJ and uh, how to create a Maven project and uh, map the Spark core and Spark SQL libraries in your Palm XML and uh, write less than 10 lines of code using Scala as a language um, using the Spark libraries. And then uh, once the code is ready, run the SPT assembly program because you need to install SBT uh, in your uh, system to package your creation and then run the job in a cluster. So you see that these four steps will help you convert any file format to any file format using Spark libraries and the language is Scala. So prep the IDE is what I'm going to cover as a first step. You know, we need to have IntelliJ, we need to have Maven installed and uh, you need to have SBT so let, let, let me show you how we can do that so I have IntelliJ here uh, I have set up a Maven workspace if you have you can see multiple places how you can create a Maven workspace for installing the SBT uh, plugin just go to uh, preferences and search for plugins and look for SBT. This is what I have installed in my system. That's why I'm able to have these kind of consoles in my dashboard and I have SBT console. Let's talk about uh, SBT uh, briefly. Um, you can compare SBT to Maven for the language of Scala. So using Maven, you can build a Java project and using SQSBD, you can basically package a, a Scala project. Step two is you need to line 10, line 10, 10 lines of Spark logic using Scala. So let's see how we're going to do that. All you need to have is just these two libraries because using a Spark context, you can, you can create only an RDD. But if you want a data set which provides you multiple util methods to write to JSON, Parquet, uh, what not you can create a, a spark session which will in turn give you spark context and that is achieved by importing the spark sql library okay so this is the csv file we're going to parse so if you see here one two three four five six seven and i haven't seen anything after the last comma so it's basically seven fields we're trying to map to csv one thing, one good thing about converting a CSV to JSON is that a CSV might, most of the times, will have a proper defined schema. It might be an empty column all by itself, but still it will be having a column right there. But JSON is like, uh, it can be called as an advantage. Not all JSON of uh, same type will can, might have the same, all, all the fields, right? So converting from CSV to JSON is kind of easy compared to JS, JSON to CSV. But still, it's doable. So, if you see the program, number one is I'm defining a type. So, this is this is what we have. So, I'm defining a JSON object. Uh, this is a class. So it can be any name. So, I'm some time zone number, some number integer, and then some min or max string. I don't know what the data set is about. So, I'm just giving a random names to it. Some number one empty string one empty string two and then finally empty string so that's how i'm mapping it here and then i'm running a, I'm, I'm writing a mapper function where i'm getting a string and uh, i'm splitting this this is where i'll be getting this string and uh, i mean any string of this type i'm splitting it using comma and i'm mapping the objects of type json object and i'm returning it so it's functional programming so let me show you the place where I'm calling this. So, so whatever CSV you're going to convert, you just need to map the columns here and you need to map the exact fields 
uh, to the types whatever types they are having and then uh, you are having the logger and setting this up because I, I want to skip all the info that is getting printed when I run the program and then um, and then and then you have the spark session being created here so remember to remove this line when you're running in a cluster like a AWS EMR where the settings because whatever you have a settings in the script takes the highest priority so if you don't remove this even though you have cluster size of 50 your program will be executing only in the master node so remove that and currently I'm having it because I'm asking the asking the driver program to use my whole system uh, so my the Mac OS what I'm, what I'm currently running has two cores in it so when you see the output you can see that uh, there will be two files getting created because of the, of the partition so we have two parallel processes running the system so then um, I have the spark context out of spark session I'm reading a text file which is a CSV file I already showed the file what the format it does it does 1800 plus lines and uh, get out of get out create so now I have the lines now I need to convert each and every line of this kind into uh, this object so I'm running a map function so I'm, I'm calling that dot map function uh, on it and uh, so this functional programming so each and every line gets executed on over this function again and again until it collects a data set of objects this is RDD so this RDD will have a list of this object JSON object I must have, I must have given a different name this is kind of confusing with the JavaScript and uh, a Google JSON library anyways now we have the RDD full of JSON objects now I'm converting into it into the 2DS data set using the spark in presets library and once that is ready uh, this data set is a data set API which is in internally in RDD by itself and I'm calling the write method on it and on the write method I'm calling the JSON method on it I'm giving a, uh, I'm giving a location where I want the output to be created and that's it that's my driver program so the actual program is done, in, done here one where I read the file two where I convert each line into an object three a data set and four writing into JSON let's run the program and see how it's running how what's what's what it's doing I'm expecting output to be created over here so yes as I said it is using all my cores so it, it has created two partitions so see the JSON objects getting created so it has 914 lines the others should also have 914 lines that's how it's divided and concoid. Yes, that's how you convert a CSV into JSON. So if you want to see how partition works, if I ask my cluster, if I ask my driver program to use only one one of the available cores, there is no part distributed computing. But still, if it's another program, okay. Let me delete this file real quick. There will be only one partition created and it will have 1800 in it. That's it. So that's the significance of this particular line and remember to remove this line uh, when you are uh, deploying it to the actual cluster where you're going to execute this program. So now this program is ready and this is not a big deal. The next big deal is to package the scalar program and execute it using the spark assembly uh, spark submit and see how it works so as a part of uh, part two uh, of this uh, lecture or tutorial however you want to call it we're going to see this sb assembly uh, with that will package your scala code what you just wrote into a, a executable jar and then you're going to use spark submit option to submit a, a job the driver program that's the term you should use 
So whatever we just wrote as a driver program, and you're going to use Spark Submit or Submit a driver program to whichever cluster you want. So once we test it, next step is to run on a cluster. Cluster of my choice is AWS EMR. I'm going to put my real money dudes. So let's do it. Part two. I'll be doing it sometime next week. Thank you.